All right, Daryl Lawson Live coming to you this evening. It's the 23rd of January, 2017, 928 in the evening, California time, 928 p.m. here. Listen, I've been studying these scriptures ever since I was a little kid. What scriptures? The, the scriptures on the coming of Jesus. Now, I don't know if you read this scripture or these scriptures lately, but I want to just give you a few or several scriptures in the Bible that may unlock a massive secret in these last days. People are always asking me, Daryl, when do you think Jesus is returning? Daryl, when do you think <laughs> the rapture is going to happen? The next great rapture, the next resurrection, the catching away of the born-again, spirit-filled people on the earth. And I keep on telling people, listen, the Bible says nobody, no man, no person knows the day nor hour, nor should we set dates. But when the Holy Spirit comes into a person, when a person gets born again, spirit-filled, Jesus washes their sins away. Jesus' Spirit comes upon the people and fills them with the Spirit. You get to, get to see things that other people don't, don't see. You get to hear things other people don't hear, right? Which is the revelations of the Scripture, the revelations of the kingdom of Jesus. Yeah. And so Jesus will let his people know when the time is, is nearing. Is that, is that proper English? When the time is near. <laughs> Jesus always reveals to his people when the time is near. Get ready, Noah. Get ready, Noah. I'm going to cause it to rain on the earth. And you better build yourself a boat. <laughs> get ready, right? Yeah, I mean, get ready, uh, 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 Mary and Joseph. I'm going to bring you a son. Uh, I'm going to bring you the ruler of Israel, the ruler of the nations, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. The Lord always reveals his secrets. Uh, to the people on the earth, right? So, I am wondering, this is an amazing uh, set of scriptures that, uh, I'll, I'll read them here in a moment. Let me say it this way. Is the Trump presidency, is Trump becoming the 45th president of the U.S.? Is it in scriptures? Did the Lord reveal that the Trump presidency would precede the rapture? Did the Lord Jesus, did the Holy Spirit, did God the Father tell us thousands of years ago that Trump would be president just before the next rapture? I've been reading these scriptures tonight, and it just jumped out off the page. <laughs> and I'm going to give to you what I, what I was reading tonight. Yeah, it Very, very interesting. Like I said, I found a Bible on the street. I have the Bible right here uh, when I was 11. 11, 10 and a half, 11, yeah, many moons ago, I found the Bible on the street, a little New Testament, little Gideon's New Testament, and from that day on, I started reading the Bible, yeah, and to this day, I've, re I've been reading this scripture, <clears throat> I don't know how many thousands of times over the years, from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I'm going to read uh, several verses, and then I'm going to jump into 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, all right, I'm going to make it simple, I'm just going to give you... Uh, two uh, books, two references in two different books from 1 Corinthians in the Bible and 1 Thessalonians. 1 Corinthians and 1 Thessalonians, right? Which primarily just narrows it down to the coming of Jesus, all right? Uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask this question before I read it. Is Trump, is Donald J. Trump's name in the Bible as a clue to the world that only is really unlocked in 2017, <laughs> is Donald Trump's name in the Bible that unlocks a time code, a timepiece, a sign on the soon return of Jesus? You tell me. All right. I, I, I'm, I am amazed. I am really amazed that I read this again tonight and it jumped off the page to me. Now, people right away can say this, that, and the other, but let's go through it, and you tell me what you think. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole chapter. I'm going to jump into 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50. Now, this is talking about the return of Jesus. This is talking about uh, the rapture. Now, the word rapture is not found in the Bible, but it is a, it is a name for an event that people have coined over the years, rapture, uh, meaning... Uh, explaining the gathering together, the catching away of born-again, spirit-filled Christians uh, in the near future, but it's already happened several times in the past, and it will happen several times in the future. What? The catching away of born-again, spirit-filled Christians uh, alive, spirit, soul, and body taken from the earth to heaven. It happened to Enoch. 
It happened to Elijah. It happened to uh, Jesus. <laughs> Did not Jesus go to heaven, spirit, soul, and body? Yeah. And there was a whole bunch of Christians that came out from the graves at the resurrection 2,000 years ago as well. It will happen to uh, the born-again, spirit-filled people in the last days, like around this time uh, and in the near future. It will also happen to the 144,000 uh, Jews that come to Jesus during the Great Tribulation period. It will also happen to the two Jewish prophets that come to Jerusalem during the Great Tribulation, preaching uh, uh, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Jesus, and really preaching against the Antichrist and the New World Order. They will also be raptured, spirit, soul, and body from the earth. Whoa! All right, so it's not a new doctrine. It's a old doctrine. It's a way that Jesus takes people from the earth. Elijah went to heaven, spirit, soul, and body without dying. Enoch was not for God took him. Oh, yeah. All right, and uh, Jesus was taken to heaven, spirit, soul, and body in front of everybody. Wow. Wow. And like I said, it's about to happen, and it's about to happen uh, in, uh, several times uh, in, in the future after we leave. All right? Okay. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now, I don't use, I've already done three shows today. <laughs> Happy Monday. Yeah, I've already done, I've done three live, pro, uh, well, two live programs every day, Monday through Friday. I do uh, 10 a.m. shows, live shows, 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. live shows on Facebook Live. I just finished them today with a recap on YouTube. So I've just finished three shows. But as I was reading the scriptures tonight at 9.30 p.m., now it's 9.35, as I was reading the scriptures, this really jumped off the page, and I said, is this a coincidence, or is this a revelation in the scriptures? I think it's a revelation in the scriptures. I think Donald Trump's name is mentioned in the scriptures in these verses. <laughs> like I said, for years, nobody really could explain this adequately to me and I'll, uh, uh, the meaning of what I'm about to tell you, all right? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50. Now this I say, brethren, this is the Apostle Paul, by the Holy Spirit, writing, speaking. Paul said, now I say, brethren, Christians, born again, spirit-filled people, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. Flesh and blood. Humans cannot inherit the kingdom of God. You have to be changed. You have to have the power of the Holy Spirit transform you into a glorified being, because when you're traveling from the earth to heaven, you're going to need some kind of transformation. Okay. Verse 51, behold. Okay, he said, grab a hold of this. I show you a secret, a mystery. 1 Corinthians 15, 51, behold, I show you a mystery. Behold, I show you a secret. What? What secret? You know, it's kind of strange that people still today don't really know much about the next great resurrection, the next great rapture, the next the next great catching away of people from the earth to heaven. To go to a wedding banquet, the, the, the wedding supper of the Lamb. Yeah. And it's still a, a secret to a lot of people. But 2,000 years ago, Paul said, I show you a secret. I show you a mystery. I show you. We shall not all sleep. We shall not all die. Hello. I just got back from the gym. <laughs> One of the reasons I work out all the time is because I don't want to die before Jesus returns. <laughs> I want to stay healthy. Thank you very much. Speaking of that, cheers. He says, 1 Corinthians 15, 51, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We shall not all die. But we shall be changed. Well, yeah. Just like Jesus' body was changed by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was all beat up. He was all tortured. He, he had uh, lost all the blood out of his body. He was pierced on the side, pierced in the skull with uh, the, 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 the crown of thorns, stabbed in the side. Uh, he was crucified yeah, and came back to life healed. Right? He, Jesus was changed. Resurrected body. Here, here, here's the very, the very interesting verse. 1 Corinthians 15, 52. Paul said, in a moment, in a, in a split second, in the twinkling of an eye, meaning faster than a blink. Or it's not even a blink. It's actually a twitch of the eye. It's, it's, a, it's a twinkling of an eye. It's, a, it's, it's even faster than a twinkle. It's in a split second. Yeah. At the last trump. What did you say? In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. 
Now you tell me who just became president on Friday. Who had the inauguration as the 45th president of the U.S. on Friday? <laughs> All right, January 20th. Who became president? Uh, last time I checked, it was Trump. Now, am I seeing something here that uh, was always here, but I just kind of realized it again? <laughs> wow. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last Trump. Now, for years, I thought, obviously, it's meaning what? A trumpet? People have said, you know, maybe this is the Feast of Trumpets. And for years, I have never really quite felt or came across a, 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 you know, a solid definition of this particular word, Trump. Because it mentions trumpet in the same verse. It says, in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound. So why didn't they just say, in a moment, or why didn't Paul just say, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound? Because he uses trumpet in the, in the, in the next word, wording here, in the, in the, one, two, the third, third word after trump. He uses trumpet. So why not use trumpet and then trumpet again? Why use trump? Is that a coincidence? Is that a revelation? That the Bible actually mentions the name trump. Now, if you look it up in the Greek, which I'm going to go over here now, uh, there are two different words for trump and trumpet. Yeah, <clears throat> and I'll bring it up here in a moment. Let me read the full verse. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So he tells us in verse 51 that not everybody is going to die when the Lord returns. Not everybody, not all the Christians will die in the, in the last days when the Lord returns. Like, not everybody is going to go through the Great Tribulation and get their heads cut off. You know, uh, not every Christian uh, will, uh, in 2017 maybe, 2018, 2019, the last generation shall not all die before the Lord's return at the uh, Battle of Armageddon. The Battle of Armageddon is a time period where the Lord does return. Jesus returns to kick the Antichrist's butt. But the Lord returns before that to get the Christians, the born-again spiritual Christians, off the earth to a wedding banquet in heaven. So he said, we're not all going to die. All right. At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, trump and then trumpet, and the dead shall be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed, so we which are alive. But this corruption, this corruptible body, this uh, uh, mortal body, must put on immortality and corruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. It says it right there, yeah. Okay, now I'm going to jump into um, 1 Thessalonians 4.13. Again, the Apostle Paul, by the Holy Spirit speaking, and he says, uh, I would not have you ignorant. Same thing he said before. I, wish I show you a mystery, a secret. <clears throat> and I'll say this again. I don't think the Lord is into keeping secrets from his people. The Lord loves to reveal his plans to his people on the earth over and over. In every generation, Jesus always revealed to, uh, to the people on the earth and into heaven what he was going to do. Yeah, so uh, why would he not do it for us in 2017? <clears throat> now, I've been saying this. Now, this is, this is by itself, uh, may not be as a big, uh, uh, well, it's pretty huge, I think. It's hugely, <laughs> it's huge, it's bigly, as Trump would say. But when you put all the pieces together, what pieces? Well, I have, how many videos? I have over 1,400 videos on YouTube. <clears throat> All right, that on my YouTube channel, if you go to DarylLawsomeLive.com, DarylLawsome.com, it'll get you to the same place. You'll see <clears throat> all my social media, my Facebook pages, my Twitter, Google+, Instagram, YouTube channel. And on my YouTube channel, I have thousands of videos that I've done personally on this subject. Now, this is a very unique time because we've just changed presidents from the Antichrist Obama. And I, I'm tell, I, I, I've said this since... September of 2008, that Obama is the Antichrist. See, Obama being the Antichrist is a huge uh, sign that we're living in the end times. 
Seriously, I found out that Obama was the Antichrist in 2008, September. And for over eight years, uh, I have been telling people that Obama is the Antichrist, because he is. And if you don't see that by now, then, then you're not looking or paying attention. Yeah, anyways. The fact that Obama is the Antichrist, <clears throat> and the Bible said that the Antichrist would come just before the return of Jesus. He would come into power, Revelation chapter 13. He would uh, then go out of power, lose power, Revelation chapter 13, one, verse 1 to 3. And then he would come back into power, Revelation 13, 3. Wow, in the last days. And be helped and abetted or aided by the uh, false prophet, the Antichrist, would come into power, go out of power for a short time, come back into power, and be helped by the false prophet or the pope. So these two men are mentioned in that chapter, <clears throat> Revelation 13. The Antichrist for the first half of the chapter and the false prophet, uh, the Pope. So Obama's mentioned the first half of Revelation 13 and Pope Francis is mentioned the second half. Yeah, the two beasts in the last days. Okay. So Obama is a timepiece of the return of Jesus. <clears throat> and the return of Jesus uh, is very near. All right. So the fact that Obama's the Antichrist. Pope Francis came into power and kicked out Pope Benedict was, is another signpost. The fact that the first Jesuit Pope kicked out Benedict out of, out of power when Obama the Antichrist was the president was a huge signpost of, these, of this dynamic duo of evil coming into power. Now, many people uh, are now questioning whether Obama is the Antichrist. Uh, uh, because of his of his evil deeds. Now they just don't know where to put him now that he's come out of power. But I keep on showing people from Revelation chapter 13, verse 1 to 3, that the Antichrist comes into power, comes out of power, and goes back into power. All right. Let me just bring that up quickly. Uh, just for people that have not seen my videos or heard this before. Revelation chapter 13. Uh, uh, 1, 2, and 3. Uh, Revelation 13, verse 1, 2, and 3. But I'm just going to jump into, you can read the rest for time's sake. I want to get back to the Trump name here. Revelation 13, 3. John said, the apostle, I saw one of his heads, the head, one of the heads of the beast of the new world order, as it, as it were, wounded to death. And then the deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. It's talking about the Antichrist here. It's talking about Obama. Now, Obama obviously comes into power in this chapter and comes out of power. Right, yeah. And I, I, I mention this almost on a daily, on a daily, uh, on a daily basis. Yeah, I'm not going to read all of this, but uh, let me jump into uh, verse, well, let me just read four. And they worshiped the dragon, the devil, which gave power to the beast, the New World Order and, and Obama. And they worshiped the beast, saying, who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Talking about a man here and a system, and one, one world order. And there was given unto him, see this is, this is Obama, a mouth. Oof, that guy can yap. Speaking great things of blasphemy, like anti-biblical stuff. And power was given to him to continue, Revelation 13, 5, to continue 42 months. Now, to me, because if you add the other verses, verse 3, which one of the heads were wounded to death. And now it speaks about in verse 5, a continuation uh, there is a stoppage here of the Antichrist's power for a short period of time. Now, for years and years and years and years, most biblical scholars, probably all of them, as I, I haven't heard anybody say that the Antichrist, number one, was a U.S. president. Number two, that the Antichrist would come into power and go out of power. Usually they take these verses and say the Antichrist is going to be assassinated and then come back to life. They were assuming that. They were guessing that. But I'm saying it's probably not an assassination. It's probably uh, pointing Revelation 13, 3 to the U.S. presidency being taken over by Donald Trump, who's not part of the Matrix, not part of the New World Order, and will beat to hell the New World Order in the North American continent, especially in the U.S. Yeah. So I say it's Revelation 13, 3 is probably not talking about assassination of the Antichrist but more as a removal of his power. But Revelation 13, 3b says his deadly wound was healed. His deadly wound. So obviously the Antichrist comes to power. He comes out of power and loses it to death. 
And then he gets his power back and his deadly wound. His power is restored. He was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. Talking about the Antichrist. Because it says in verse 4, who is able to make war with it? And then he's going to be angry. And then verse 5, there was given unto him, Obama, the Antichrist, a mouth speaking great things. So he gets his power back and power was given to him, to him, a person, a human, a man, to continue 42 months. Comes into power eight years as a president, comes out of power, comes back into power, and it says for 42 months, three and a half years. Now, when you piece all the other events in the, in the Bible together, end time prophecies, uh, it's very clear that the Antichrist uh, will be known to some people at, uh, uh, and, uh, and levels of revelation of the Antichrist. Let me say it this way. Levels of, of people realizing who the Antichrist comes, comes in, in different stages. Some people will know that he's the Antichrist before the rapture. <laughs> A lot of people will know that he's the Antichrist after the rapture. <laughs> wow, yeah, I mean, hello, we're gone. <laughs> and not only will the born-again, spirit-filled Christians be gone that are alive, which will be amazing, all the dead Christian bodies will, will raise from the ground, be risen from the ground, a resurrection of their bodies, because they need, the Christians in heaven, that are the spirits and souls of Christians in heaven right now, that have died in the last 6,000 years, they need their bodies to eat. <laughs> human food, right? <laughs> so Jesus will, and always win the plan, to restore humans to their whole being, spirit, soul, and body. So the Christians, most Christians in heaven, the people that are in heaven, most of them don't have their human bodies. So at the next rapture, all the bodies of the Christians will rise from the earth to heaven, except those that have gone before, like the Enochs, the Elijahs, and uh, the saints in and around Jerusalem that were raised from the dead at the resurrection. Yeah. And, uh, and then uh, the rest of the bodies now will be uh, uh, going to heaven to reunite with the spirits and souls of their, uh, <laughs> of their owners. <laughs> Because yeah, the Christians need their bodies to go to the banquet. All right. So Revelation 13, 5, And there was given unto the Antichrist the mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. That's all. That's what Obama always does. Just speaks anti-biblical things. And power was given unto him to continue. So obviously he, he was in power. He lost power. And now he's continuing for 42 months. So that's in the near future. Obama will gain his power back somehow in the near future and rule the new world order. Okay, now back to 1 Thessalonians 4, 13. I would not have you ignorant, brethren, Christians, concerning them which are asleep, the, the, the Christian bodies that have died and the people that went to heaven, right? Because when a person dies, a born-again, spiritful, born spiritful person dies, their body is laid in the grave and their spirit and soul will go to heaven, which is one. You are a spirit being. You have a brain of your spirit. That's your soul. Like your body has a brain, so does your spirit. Your spirit has a brain. It's called your soul. Your mind, will, emotions, intellect. Anyways, uh... Your spirit and soul go to heaven. Your body is laid in the ground. Your body turns into ashes or whatever happens to your body. Okay, but when Jesus comes back, that body will be resurrected and we will all be re reunited together in heaven, spirit, soul, and body. Okay, I would not have you stupid, ignorant, brethren, concerning them which have died, their bodies, that you sorrow not even as other sinners which have no hope. For if we believe, verse 14, 1 Thessalonians 4, 14, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, if he rose again, this is, this is the case. This is the legal precedent. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, his spirit, soul, and body to heaven, even so them which sleep in Jesus, those that have died in Jesus, will God bring with him in the next rapture. So Paul's making the same case that I'm making here, or I'm making the same case that Paul made. We will have our bodies in heaven with us at the banquet supper. During the Great Tribulation period, at the next rapture, Jesus will bring with him, and Jesus will bring, uh, let me read it again, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep died in Jesus, born again, spirit-filled people, will God bring with him, Jesus is God, Je Jesus is going to bring those dead bodies alive and bring them to heaven. Verse 15, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain, hello, alive, unto the coming of Jesus, the Lord, shall not prevent them which are asleep. So we're not going to go to heaven without their bodies coming to heaven as well. 
Verse 16, for the Lord himself, Jesus shall descend from heaven. Heaven's a real place. With a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead, he's, talk, not, he's talking about the earth, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. The dead bodies shall rise. Verse 17, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. There's the, there's the phrase for the rapture. The catching away, the catching up, the ubering up, the taxing up, whatever you want to call it. The, I call it the resurrection, the rapture, the catching away. The uber ride to heaven. For the Lord Jesus shall come from heaven with a shout, the voice of, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump, and with the trump of God. Is he referring to a trumpet here again, or is he, or, or is, or, or is he referring to a president trump? And the dead in Christ shall rise first, because the other verses talk about two trumps, a trump and a trumpet. Now you could say it's one, but it doesn't look like one, and I'll, I'll go over that in a moment. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, because the fact of the matter is Donald J. Trump just became president. And we are this close to the return of Jesus. The Antichrist has been in power for eight years as U.S. US president. He just left to go to California. Now I think he may be flying somewhere else. He's out of power for a short period of time. And Trump just became president. Is that a coincidence that Trump took over from the Antichrist? With the Trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Verse 17. Then we which are alive... Alive, 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 and remain on the earth shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. It's not sci-fi here, it, people. It's, this is the Bible, the most reliable book on this planet. We'll be caught up, not down, up together with them, with those resurrect, re resurrected Christian saints' bodies in the clouds. Now, Will the Christians in heaven meet us all in the sky? Or will, or, or will we meet them uh, in heaven when we get there? It's, not a, it's, it's a pretty fast journey from earth to heaven. There's a portal just above the earth. It's a door. It's a portal that you go through that door and you automatically get to heaven. You don't have to travel through gazillion light years to get to heaven. There's a por portal. People call it a black hole, whatever. It's, Jesus calls it a door. You get from the earth to heaven. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. In the clouds. What? To meet Jesus the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Comfort one another with these words. So I'm saying in verse 16, in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, and 1 Corinthians 15, 52, it mentions the name of Trump. Is this a end time clue to the return of Jesus? I think so. Now the reason is, let's go back to 1 Corinthians 15, 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, split second, at the last trump, then it stops and says, for the trumpet shall sound. Now why didn't they say in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound? Why did they stop here? Why did the scripture stop and say at the last trump? They didn't, it wasn't even translated trumpet. It was translated trump. Now, if you go into, I'm going to look up the Greek here. And I, I already looked it up before I went live here. First Corinthians, let me pull up that scripture. First Corinthians chapter 15 in the Greek, verse 52. Okay. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, all right, the Greek word is S-A-L-P-I-G-X. Then it says, for the trumpet shall sound, uh, S-A-L-P-I-Z or Z-O. It's different. Trumpet shall sound is different than the trump. S-A-L-P-I-G-X to... S-A-L-P-I-Z-O. It's a different word. Why, does it, why is it a different word? Why not just use the same word? Why use the word uh, salpinx 
really. The, the, the pronunciation of S-A-L-P-I, uh, I think it's uh, G-Q, G-X, pronounced Salpinks. Why use that word and then use uh, Salpizo? Why use two different words? Why not just use the same Greek word, Salpizo, twice? S-A-L-P-I-Z-O. Why not use it twice? Why change the wording right there? Why have a why have a different word? At the last Trump, okay, the last Trump, the word for Trump is Salpix. Now, the Greek definition starts out by saying perhaps. Perhaps it's from G43 uh, 4535. Perhaps it's from a a trumpet, but it's not saying it is. It's saying perhaps it's from a trumpet. It's a different word. So to me, I've, I've read this for years. I thought, why did they always say at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound? Because people have been trying to guess this for years. For all the years I can remember being born again, spirit filled. People have always tried this thing to say maybe this is a feast, a Jewish feast. Uh, maybe this is a the, the the word trumpet, just you know, in a different form. But I always thought, you know, it just seems like it's just cut here, and there's something else there that people haven't had the full revelation of yet. So when I noticed, hello, that Donald Trump became president, and his name happens to be in this verse. Uh, is it a stretch to think that maybe Jesus was talking about Donald Trump being president? <laughs> As a sign for the soon return of Jesus? At the last Trump? At the last President Trump? Why? What? Yeah. For the trumpet shall sound. At the last Trump, for the trumpet shall sound. People assume that it was trumpet, trumpet. I'm not assuming anything in these last days. I'm thinking, hey, I'm not assuming anything. I'm looking and re-looking at scriptures that people have assumed for decades, hundreds of years, and thousands of years. And because they didn't get to see what just happened in 2017, Donald J. Trump taking over the presidency from a communist dictator, Antichrist Obama, I think we have, we have, we have a one up on them. We have a hundred up on them. We have a thousand up on the other generations because we get to see things happening before our very eyes that are being revealed daily in Scripture. We are seeing end time prophecies being fulfilled. Is, is it a stretch to think that Donald Trump's name is in there? Well, his name is in there. Now, other easier translations assume it's trumpet. At the last trumpet, they automatically just... Like the New Living Translation will just say that at the last trumpet. And they'll just, they'll just lump it together. I don't like lumping anything together. Because right before our very eyes, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and now Monday, four days, there's a Trump in the White House. Is this a coincidence? I, I No, 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 no. I learned to look and relook and study and meditate on the Word of God and ask the Holy Spirit, hey, something going on here. You know, if Trump would have been, you know, I don't know, some other position rather than taking over from the Antichrist, I might not think about this. You know, if Trump was going to be, you know, I don't know, CIA director. If Donald J. Trump became, I don't know, uh, Secretary of State. But it's it's kind of amazing that Donald J. Trump def defeated a New World Order Hillary Clinton to take over the spot of the Antichrist. Donald J. Trump just didn't take over as Secretary of State or CIA Director, or FBI Director, or whatever. Donald J. Trump took over the Antichrist's, Obama's position. Now, if that's not a fulfillment of putting the Antichrist out of power, I don't know what is. So, if Trump did take over and kick the Antichrist out of the White House, is it a far stretch of the imagination that Trump's name would be in the Scriptures? 
man, if someone took the, and kicked the Antichrist out of the White House, his name should be in Scripture. <laughs> in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last Trump. Trump? Did you say Trump? Oh, that's his trumpet. It says Trump. If you look at the Greek, 1552, it's a different word than trumpet. It actually says through the idea of quavering. Now, if you look up the word uh, quavering, it means shaking, the great shaking. <laughs> Quaver, to shake. To tremble. Now, I don't know about what other people think, but Trump is shaking the White House. Trump is shaking uh, the whole USA and North America and the world right now. I mean, he's only been in power since Friday, and he's already slashed Obamacare. Uh, it's, uh, Obamacare's on the way out. He's already putting a new place for uh, great health care in. He's just, he, he slashed Obamacare. Obamacare is like on life support, ready to die. Uh, it's going to die. Uh, he's already cut down the, the Trans-Pacific Partnership trade crappy deal. Uh, today he's already given the mil or you know the military is going to get a raise. He's already put a, a, a kibosh on all federal government hiring. I mean this guy he's already stopped uh, funding abortions out of the U.S. for for people overseas or whatever. No 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 stop 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 yeah. Trump is is quavering the world, shaking the world to shake uh, tremulously. Ever heard that word before? To shake, uh, let me pull this other word up right here. Here's the word. Play. Stubborn. Tremulous. Tremulous. It's not playing for me, but it's really tremulous. T-R-E-M-U-L-O-U-S. Tremulous. Supposed to have a sound right here, right? Tremulous. Anyways, I know what it is. To shake tremulously. Let me pull that back up here. To shake rigorously. <laughs> to freak everybody out. Trembling. Putting people in fear. <laughs> Trembling uh, as from fear of what you're going to do. Shaking, quivering, origins of tremulous. Uh, comes from, I, I think it comes from uh, the Latin, yeah. Uh, let me pull this up here. His, historical examples. We all miss her mother, said the old father trem, trem, uh, tremulously. <laughs> Tremulous. Excitement. To shake. Latin. Tremulous. From tremere to shake. If that's not what Trump's doing, I mean, Trump's shaking everything up. 16 tens from Latin tremulous. Shaking. <laughs> That sounds more than a tr that, that sounds more than a trumpet to me. All right, and I'm just saying I just think I'm not taking anything for granted from the scriptures. I am rehashing, relooking, reexamining every scripture on end time events, and not assuming anything, because what I've seen, uh, a quavering or tremulous shake, they're saying in the voice, but it could be anything. Now, people are saying, well, that's, you know, that's probably uh, on a musical instrument. Is it? Now, I see what's happening in the planet. I see Trump coming into power. I see Trump kicking out Obama out of the, out of the, out of the, the Antichrist out of the White, White House. I see the shaking of what Trump is doing against the New World Order. I see him beating one of the heads of the beast to death in this North American area. 
in the U.S. particular, but it affects this whole, you know, one 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 of the continents right here. And really, it's affecting the world because if you if you if you beat to death one of the heads of the beast, which has seven heads, you're going to affect the world because they're all connected. It's like Hydra. Whoa. First Corinthians fifteen fifty two. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, at the last shaking, Trump shaking the U.S. and the world. That's what he's doing. Because the word uh, S-A-L-P-I-G-Q, Selpink is pronounced, the Greek word for Trump, uh, for Trump is shaking. Because uh, it says perhaps from the trumpet definition, but it doesn't say it's, it is. It just says it's, 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 a, it's something that's going to shake things up. Trump shakes things up. Whoa. And then it goes on to say, for the trumpet shall sound, which is salpizo. S-A-L-P-I-Z-O. And it doesn't say perhaps in this word. It says from to trumpet, to sound blast. Literally, sound of a trumpet. So this word here, for the trumpet shall sound, is different than Trump. Now, they can say what they want and try to water it down in other translations, but when you look at it, the Greek, it's definitely at the last shaking, the trump that does the shaking. Then it says, for the trumpet blast, the, the, the no, noise of a trumpet shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall be raised, incorruptible, and we, and we, and we shall be changed. And then you add that to First Thessalonians chapter 4. It's almost the same wor verbiage or word, wording. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, verse 14, 1 Thessalonians 4, 14, even them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall come down from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. <laughs> 4, 16. <clears throat> Again, it's the word selpinks, which refers to perhaps a trumpet. But it's not the, it's not, it's not the sound of the trumpet as in the, it, it's not the definite trumpet sound here. They're, they're guessing, they're saying here in the dictionary, the, the Hebrew dictionary, perhaps it's from the, 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 uh, the other, let me see here, let me pull this up. And it says perhaps, perhaps it's from G4, Five three five, which is the Greek, uh, the, the Greek word salos, vibration. <laughs> I'm picking up good vibrations. Yeah, because even even in the in the in the guessing here, the the, the 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 translators are guessing. It says probably from the word salos, the Greek word s a l o s, which is a vibration. Or a wave. If, if anybody's making waves and vibrations, it's Trump. It's not referring to the trumpet sound of a trumpet. It's using the definitions of vibration or waves or shaking. So I'm saying, you know, if it was if it was the same word used over and over, I would say, well, it's the trumpet sound, the sound of a musical instrument. But it's not. <laughs> Whoa! So again, in the in another book of the Bible, in First Thessalonians four sixteen, which I just read, it says, "And with the trump of God, with the great shaking of God, with Trump shaking the nations, the dead in Christ shall rise at that time. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be the Lord." Is this a clue that Trump will be in power or Trump will shake everything up? And then this rapture will happen soon thereafter. So it, it, is it saying that Trump will be in power shaking things up and the rapture will happen? Or does it say that Trump will be shaking things up and sometime after that, whether he's in power or not, the rapture will happen? 
So you could say, well, are you saying that, that the rapture has to happen while Trump's president? I don't think it says that. It says that Trump will be shaking things up. And then the rapture will happen. So is there a high probability that, that it could happen during a Trump presidency? Yeah. Or shortly thereafter? Yes. Because <laughs> it's not the same words as the trumpet sound of a musical instrument. It's a... It's, it's, a, it's pointing to something shaking things up. Now, maybe it's actually pointing to Donald Trump shaking things up and the translators didn't know what to do with it. If you were translating this out of the original uh, 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 Greek, what would you do? Uh, I don't know who Donald J. Trump is. So they translated the best they can. But the word is Celpix. It is a shaking. It's a trembling. It's a major vibrations going on on the planet. Is it the wounding of the head to, uh, of the beast to death? Is this talking about Trump bringing about a great shaking just before the next rapture? And actually, does the Bible actually put Donald Trump's name in there? I think it does. I think it does. Because when you add all the other points together... When you're adding all the other pieces together and looking at the puzzle of end-time prophecy events together, I don't think it's a coincidence. I don't think that, that this word Trump is in here as a coincidence. I think it's a clue. I think it's a revelation. I think Donald Trump's name is in there, pointing out to end an end.